Street giving a bullish outlook on online dating company Match Group following Friday's Epic Games versus Apple ruling. Cowan, Evercore SI, KeyBank, analysts all coming out and saying the company's margins could benefit from Apple no longer being allowed to force app developers to use in-app purchasing. Match Group came out in support of the ruling in a statement Friday saying, quote, the court got it right that Apple has abused their power and engaged in unfair behavior. Apple's general counsel, Kate Adams, issued a statement following the ruling saying, we are very pleased with the court's ruling and we consider this a huge win for Apple. This decision validates that Apple's success is not illegal, as the judge said. Match Group CFO and COO Gary Swidler joins us now for a closing bell exclusive. So it's interesting that Apple's claiming victory here. How, how is it a win for you, Gary? What was your reaction at Match? Well, we, we thought that the ruling was a win for consumers and for developers. And no matter how Apple chooses to spin it, it was not a win for Apple. Uh, a judge telling you that you behave in an unfair manner and are deceptive to consumers through your practices is not a positive in my mind, not something that any company should aspire to. Uh, and Apple's a great company, and I think that they should apply a higher standard to themselves. And they can do it, uh, but they need to change their policies, and they need to do it now. So as a result of the ruling, I mentioned a number of analysts are positive on what it could mean for your margins, potentially for your sales. What, what type of changes will we see when it comes to the payment options? Well, it's beneficial for developers and consumers because instead of 30% going to Apple, um, now we can figure out how to invest more in our business and build our R&D, build other products. We can pass some of the savings on to consumers in the form of discounts. And really what the judge was upset about, understandably, was that Apple doesn't permit developers like us to tell consumers about other places where they could achieve a cheaper price. And she wanted Apple to stop that practice. So if they do that and consumers see that they can get a cheaper price elsewhere, they'll get a benefit from the discounted rates that, they, that we can now offer them. And we will do that. So, so what does that mean specifically for you moving forward, Gary? Will you alter the payment setups, for example? Uh, I mean, we can rework our apps so that consumers have choice in the way they pay us. Um, besides using in-app billing, they can also uh, put in their credit card or use other forms of payment uh, if Apple adheres to what we think the ruling requires and adjusts their policies to allow other forms of payment to be marketed to consumers and for, other, for consumers to have access to using other forms of payment. But do you, do you actually think, Gary, that iOS users, customers, are going to switch payment options for using Match to, to say, just a straight credit card? Are you going to incentivize them to do that in any way? Well, certainly the discount might do that. That would be a reason to offer a discount. And we do think that if consumers yeah. see a discounted price, they might choose to use another payment system. It's logical to think that. Uh, we offer choice in other scenarios, and consumers do input their credit card and use other forms of payment. So we think the same thing would apply in the Apple context, and we think it should be allowed. So do you think, Gary, this ruling is, is the end of the issue, or, or do you think and, and maybe even hope that there's uh, more to come? Well, there's clearly much, much more to come. I mean, this is a long process that is playing out in many places around the world. You know, you're seeing action by South Korea a few weeks ago in a law that went into effect today in Korea that outlaws mandatory in-app billing at both Google and Apple, which was a, the first jurisdiction to do that and was a significant step forward. You're seeing investigations in Japan and in India, in the EU, uh, into Apple and Google's practices around IAP, and it's going to keep happening. So all of these regulatory uh, and investigations, there's lawsuits by 37 states attorney generals in the U.S. There's Senate action by Senators Klobuchar and Lee. Uh, it's going to keep happening. And so the question now on the back of the EPIC ruling is, are Apple and Google going to change their practices voluntarily, or are they going to continue to see pressure from all of these different places around the world um, and, and be forced to adjust their practices. And so we don't know the answer to that question yet. And we're waiting to see what Apple's reaction is to the ruling. And once that happens, we'll see what the next steps are after that from all of these different jurisdictions. But if you look at tweets and statements that many even just US senators have made about this, people don't think this has gone far enough. 
They think that the laws uh, that we operate under are antiquated around antitrust and around these gatekeeper companies, and more reform is needed. We agree with that, and we're expecting that there will be more reform to set out more clear and modern rules around gatekeepers.